Oh, oh yeah. Woo! It's Durf and Dylan this week. Yeah. Triumphant return. <laughs> oh my God. It's Ryan Francis. It's TJ Burns. <laughs> um, it was first with Strikeout Beer. Yeah. He, that dude, that, that we went live and I didn't even get to the share button yet and I already saw that they liked it. It's like. <laughs> Look at these guys. Got these guys in routine now. They're ready for it. That does that doesn't work here. That doesn't work here. <laughs> Sorry, TJ. Thank God, Durf is back. I said the exact same thing. <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was like, "Oh my God, it's the podcast night." Oh, shit. oh wait, Fred's back. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> now we're good. All right, good to go. There you Sweet. Go. <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. I was. I would not go as far as saying I was struggling. Calm down. Calm down in the chat. It's very different when you're by yourself. It is. I haven't had to do that since 2019. (laughs) It's been a a hot minute. Yeah. (laughs) That the interview with the dude went well, I thought. Yeah. Uh, Apparently strikeout beer disagrees. So (sighs) what are you going to do? Welcome to on and off the field with Durf and Dylan. The award-winning podcast, sports podcast, charity podcast, letting you know everything, mostly football-related. Because, you know, I think baseball started, did it not? Uh, Spring training, yes. Oh, spring training started? Oh, no one cares about that. Right, which is, you know, why some of the scores are, like, super lopsided. Yeah, I, the first notification I've gotten this year for the Mariners was a one nothing win over the Padres. I was like, "Oh my god, we're starting the season one and zero against the Padres. That's awesome." <laughs> Apparently yeah. not. Okay, not quite. Not quite. See, look at that. Durf is the best name in the podcast world. You can get famous with a name like that. It is a pretty good name. You just go to Hollywood and you're like, "Hey, I'm Durf." They're like, "Oh shit." <laughs> you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> Take all my money here. <laughs> he said last week fell apart. Whoa, my God. What do you think about Russell Wilson getting traded? I know that's crazy. I, we'll get we'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Who is this cat daddy dabs in the house? The guest hung up and bolted. Yeah, he heard my voice. He's like, I'm not dealing with this. Click. <laughs> oh. Durf, you want to get your chops warmed up? You want to you want to do a little bit of a, a little bit of warm up here? A little flossing. A little bit of flossing, which is follow, like, observe, subscribe, and share. Brought to you by the one, the only, Stefan Diggs. Never forget the floss. No one cares if you're, like, using the dental floss. That's, you know, that's do that on your own time. What we care about is follow, like, observe, subscribe, and share, which Durf will tell you all about. Absolutely. You can follow, like, observe, and share on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, which we are currently live on, all by searching at OTF Podcast. Click the link in the video description to get all the other links that you need so you can be our number one fan. Make sure to rate and review the shows on Apple Podcasts so that we know how we're doing and what you like or dislike about this award-winning show. And I added, I added a piece last week. Oh, I don't know how much more of that is true. We're going through a rebrand right now for NSN. Yeah, but uh, yeah, NSN's pretty cool. Make sure you're just following uh, us, and we'll let you everything that goes on with NSN. Just make sure you're following on off the field. So if you floss, you'll know what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Just like just like the Nodi gang over here, Nodi Nodi gang from Strikeout Beer. Make sure notifications are turned on. Just make sure you know that, you know, and if you're listening to this podcast later down the road, go to Facebook and do all of this. Like sometimes I forget this is a podcast that we upload later. You know, so, sometimes that happens. <laughs> yeah. If we focus so much on the comments and interacting with people, which I love doing, it's like mm-hmm. this gets uploaded later and people probably listen to this and are so confused. <laughs> like, what is this guy <laughs> talking about? This is a live show that just oh. turns into a podcast later. Yeah. Wow, lots of lots of stuff. JJ Watt to the Cardinals. We'll obviously be talking about that. Mm-hmm. Cardinals suck and figured why not. I, we'll talk. We'll talk about that when we get there. Reunited yeah. with DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, screw the Buffalo weather. 
<laughs> so, sorry, sorry, Fred. I knew you. You knew you uh, weren't getting day duty. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. As soon as I saw the initial numbers that came out saying there was teams offering fifteen to sixteen mil, I was like, mm-hmm. want nothing to do with it. Exactly. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Feels like home five minutes in the show stalled. Nobody game. What do you mean stalled? What are you what is this guy talking about? Someone dropped the band hammer on this strikeout beer people over here harassing us. <laughs> Gosh. I don't even think I have a moderator for we don't have moderators. We should probably work on that. Yeah. We don't get enough. We don't get spam people in here anyways, though. We don't have to worry about it. We're not, not normally, pop- no. We're not popular enough to have people spam us. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeet, yeet, skirt, skirt. Hold on. Yeet, yeet, skirt, yeet. Let's jump into our favorite segment. That It's finally, it's going to fill up here in the coming months. Yeah. It's the one. It's the only. It's the, the other Lord. Lord. You want to take this one? Because I didn't even know this happened. And then I read it because you put it in the notes. I was like, this is weird. Yeah, this is a really interesting. I thought it was interesting to, to see it in the kind of headlines there. Um, but we can talk about it once I get through this. Uh, so basically, um, University of Texas President Jay Hartzell responded um, today to a report in the Texas Tribune that featured emails sent to the school by boosters angry that football players were refusing to follow tradition by singing the eyes of Texas after games. The Tribune stated that of more than 300 emails sent to Hartzell between June and October, 70% demanded the school keep playing the song and about 75 of those emails included threats of financial retribution by donors if players didn't support the tradition. The alma mater, which gets played before and after every Longhorns football game, has come under scrutiny in recent years because it was first performed in a 1903 minstrel show that featured blackface performances. Mm. Like, if, 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 if things aren't good for the rest of for everyone else then why are we still doing them like this is a very texas thing it seems like yeah we got a a very stubborn we have many texas people in the chat Mm -hmm. so let's see because right now tj's just like no one cares about the university of texas (laughs) (laughs) i mean personally that's also my opinion like what is the university that's the longhorns Right. right yep yeah, they. I don't think they've been good at football, football in a while. Let's get Seltzy boys trending in the chat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, no one cares. Maybe yeah, maybe no one cares. But it, it it's sports related, and it's kind of yeah. like I didn't know this was happening. I just for just for fun, I pulled up the lyrics because I was just curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, the eyes of Texas are upon you all the live long day. The eyes of Texas are upon you. You cannot get away. Do you think you can escape them at night or early in the morning? The eyes of Texas are upon you till Gabriel blows his horn. And it's set to the tune of I've been working on the railroad. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, The lyrics of the song have been interpreted as embracing the lost cause ideology, which advocates the belief that the practice of slavery in the antebellum South was just a just and moral. Maybe it's time to move on. Maybe let's just move. Let's just move on from the song. Maybe we don't need it. Maybe. I mean, obviously, if if you're getting threatened with financial pullback from your, what do they call them? Um, boosters. The boosters, yeah, yeah. And and it's just over a song that's been interpreted as you know, the lost cause song. Like maybe, maybe move on. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if, if anyone from Texas wants to give us a, an actual opinion, I mean, TJ's over here. He's a Texas A&M fan. Doesn't care about UT. So, and yeah, Dylan's warning us. He says, be careful with the Texas hate. I get it. I'm not yeah. hating on Texas. I'm hating on the fact 
Like, I'm, there's actually no hate at all. I'm just kind of wondering why you need this as your song. But the boosters are saying that they want them to play the Eyes of Texas. Right. Yeah. See, that now you got. I think that's the probably the bigger issue. But mm-hmm. you're basically choosing a like possibly racist song, like slavery song. I guess I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Over over seventy percent of your booster money. Is that what it's saying? Three hundred emails. Seventy percent demanded that the school keep playing the song. Right. Ooh. It's just, it's a oh. it's a touchy topic. It is a very touchy topic. It just I was just surprised that that was something that was in the headlines. I was like, oh, that is odd. I don't know. I thought we moved on from this kind of weird stuff, but. Maybe we're still we're, we're still working through it. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah, I don't I don't understand why. But let's let's make the assumption that boosters mm-hmm. are usually older folks. That is right. They have true. a lot of money. It is probably you could assume it. Yeah, I would say more than likely you're going to see an older grouping of people. So generally, the older generation has a different viewing of how things mm-hmm. are from the younger generations. Right. Probably why they want them to keep playing the song. Yeah. So it'll be a battle for, for the University will. of Texas. I mean, it reminds me. I mean, when I saw this, it, the, it I went right. The first thought I had after reading this was kind of, um, you know, back in the summer when masses of Big Ten parents were like going to the big Big Ten headquarters because they wanted their kids to play football because they thought the schools were like depriving them of their opportunities because of a of a worldwide pandemic. Um, so it's a little it, to me it's a little bit of the the eyes are or the vision of this situation is very narrow for people in favor of it. I mean, I, I could be very wrong. A lot of people are very worldly. Um, like very cultured that still, you know, could be, be believing this, but it seems like there needs to be like an eye opening, you know, look around you more of the situation and, you know, then take a, um, you know, then take a, a stance forward and try to come up with something, a better solution. Yeah. It's going to be like, yeah, like we said, it's going to be a battle mm-hmm. and we're getting, we're getting called out. Old equals racist question mark. Oh, that's geez. not. That's obviously not that's what not I'm saying. What we're saying. It's obviously not what I'm saying. Let's not. Let's not try and cherry pick words here and make me out to. Let's not turn this into. <laughs> I'm gonna end up going viral calling old people racist. You know what I'm saying. You know this song came out in 1903, and there's a possibility that some of these boosters might have been around when that song came out. You know that's all. That's all I'm saying. And I know it came out in 1903 because I Googled it. So that's all I'm saying. It's a little different. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Different time. Different time. Floss, says Josh. Yeah. Yeah, if you ain't done it, you better do it. Floss, follow, like, observe, subscribe, and share. Obviously. If you've been here, if you've been here before, you know how to do it. If you're new here, make sure you start doing it. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Oh, let's see what you guys said. I saw I saw this right before the show started. This was like mm-hmm. in the eleventh hour. Minor league baseball pushing its opening day back a month to the first week of May. Um, locally for us in Rochester, that means the Red Wings and the Bis- Bisons or Buffalo. Yep. Yeah, Rochester, the Western New York region. Yep. Uh, some of our our minor leaguers won't be playing until May, which kind of hurts. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to go to those games. Anyways, let's be honest. At this point, it's going to be probably like limited seating at the worst. Right. Or at the best. Uh, this is the result of the news that the MLB will, teams will be using alternate sites to play games like what we've seen during the pandemic short in 2020 season, which completely shut down minor league baseball. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it doesn't do this for a second year in a row. It's just a just a minor pushback. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully they can make it work. Yeah. I don't. I, I would. Ever since I moved to Rochester, I was like, I'm going to go see a Red Wings game. I'm going to go see a Red Wings game. I'm going to go see a Red Wings game. I've lived out here for like, what, seven years now? Seven, eight years? You know how many Red Wings games I've seen? One. 
because the oh, tickets were boy. free. And they're like ten dollar <laughs> tickets. It's not like you have to like break the bank to go see a Red Wings right. game. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good time that one time I went. It was a blast. Uh is baseball yeah. still a sport? Um I've I've questioned that a few times. <laughs> I don't want to offend the baseball lovers. I've already offended Dylan once tonight. I don't know if he likes baseball. <laughs> What's a sport? What's... Um, hold on. Let's throw this in here real quick also. There's that. And then sports definition. The definition of sport is an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another or others for entertainment. An individual or team but a team is made up of individuals. So I guess it can be like talking about tennis and then or like, golf or golf. All right. So there you go. There's your definition, Ryan, just in case you were confused. And yeah, so baseball is screwing over minor league baseball again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> David, welcome in, dude. I feel like I ain't seen David in a while. Maybe yeah. he's just here because you're back. That's probably why. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Baseball games are fun to go to, chill atmosphere, and usually good weather. Yeah, I've the very few times I've gone to baseball games, I've had a blast. Mm-hmm. But, um, I cannot watch baseball on TV. Physically impossible. Yeah, it's still it's a yeah, it's a, it's a one of those things you gotta push through in order if you're if you're stuck with it. I would definitely much rather go see it in person than. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll watch game sevens in the playoffs and mm-hmm. then and then like some of the World Series games. Yeah. That's about the only baseball I'll watch all year. Other than that, I just keep up with the scores and like who's doing well, stuff like that. I'm not gonna sit down and watch what is it, mm-hmm. hundred and sixty games. Get out of here. Is it the show about sports? Sometimes I question that. Um oh god. <laughs> Damn it, TJ. <laughs> I don't watch baseball on TV until the playoffs. Yep, there you go. Exactly, yeah. That's kind of, I'm kind of that same way with hockey, too. Hockey's a little bit more entertaining, but I don't have cable mm-hmm. anymore, so I don't even have the option. All right, you ready to do this? Let's do this. Let's do the real stuff. Let's yeah. talk about the freaking NFL. This is what people came here for. Hashtag Celtsy Boys. Hashtag Go Sports. What's Celtsy Boys? Can we can we get a, a can we get the I team on Celtsy Boys? Let's see what that what that's all about. All right, so this is a good one. I love this. I love when this came out because I pray to God this follows through, and this guy never sees the light of day ever again. Attorney Tom Porto mm-hmm. for the family of a five year old girl that was critically injured in a car crash involving former Kansas City Chiefs assistant coach Britt Reed who is the son of Andy Reid, who was only... Was he actually fired yet from the team? Or is he still just officially on administrative leave? No, I think his, his contract, I think, ran out. Oh, so they really didn't have to fire him. They just didn't like renew his contract. Right. Oh, oh, Jesus. <sighs> but yeah, Britt Reid says the girls... They said that the girl suffered a devastating brain injury that left her unable to walk or speak. Poro said we're going to be advocating for the most serious charges and the most serious sentence that Britt could ever receive. And Reed admitted to investigators investigators to having had a two or three drinks along with prescribed Adderall before the crash. Human garbage. Yep. Human garbage. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like, times like these where I'm kind of glad the Chiefs lost the Super Bowl because mm-hmm. I didn't want this guy having anything to do with a Super Bowl win. You know? Right. I didn't want this guy like getting a T-shirt or something like, mm-hmm. screw you. You deserve nothing. Cue the Willy Wonka. You get nothing. <laughs> I wish I had that ready to go. You get nothing. No. <laughs> <sighs> I hope he. I hope he gets put away for the rest of his life. It probably won't happen because how often, like you know, DWI crashes. You know, sometimes even if you kill the other person, 
what are you in jail for like 15, 10, 15 years if you get the worst? I mean, it's not like, it's not like he's going to be put away for life, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what the attorney does for the the five year old girl, but that's just heartbreaking. To like that, he just ruined someone's, he just ruined a family's life for the foreseeable future. Yeah, unable to speak or walk, and God only knows how like how pertinent that is. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Um. Was he drunk or something? Yep. Uh, throw him in jail. Throw him under the under the jail. <laughs> dig him. Dig him a grave under the jail. Just throw him in there. He had two drinks. They didn't take his blood for a test. I'm not sure if they did or not. He admitted to the two or three drinks. That is what they're, he said. I think they're still waiting on toxicology reports, which just seems a little fishy there. But little little slow, maybe getting those results. Oh, speaking of weird results coming back. Quick tangent here. Did you see that the one like NFL prospect took oh. a urine test and came back? <laughs> uh, sir, did you buy your pee or is that natural? Because something's not right here. <laughs> yeah. NFL prospect came back with a urine test and the urine came back positive as a pregnancy positive for a pregnancy um sir <laughs> i have questions well actually there's there there are no questions <laughs> why would you take the urine from a girl to pass your nfl test why don't you just go find a buddy like, who did you take it from walk up to your sister hey sis i need to make it to the nfl give me some urine what is wrong with you you people are insane oh yeah, two to three drinks mixed with pills is usually not going to end well. Reports take mostly mostly take three to five hours in Texas. Three to five hours, and what this was a month ago? Yeah, about yeah. I was going to say three, four weeks ago. Ooh. Fishy, definitely fishy stuff. Wait, this isn't Warzone. This isn't Fortnite. No. Nah. You're going to have to catch Green Man streaming. I don't know if I'm going to go later tonight. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. That's besides the point. Selfless plug. <laughs> what else we got in here? Ooh. Juicy JJ. The title of our episode. What is going on here? <laughs> you get it? <laughs> or what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> JJ Watt went where this derf type this. Let's, let's derf type this. <laughs> JJ Watt went where the money was and signed with the Cardinals on a two year, $31 million contract, 23 million of it guaranteed. $23 million guaranteed to a man who has, out of the last three out of his last five seasons, played barely half the year. He did play two full seasons, but only one of them was good. $23 million guaranteed. The Cardinals defense is it's shaping up to be a little bit scary. I'm I'm still so here we go. Let, let's start out simple here. Okay. I I think JJ definitely could have chased a little bit of money. I think that definitely helped in his decision making process. There are reports mm-hmm. that other teams offered him more money which I'm finding hard to believe, to be honest. It might have been with guaranteed money as well. That might have had something to do with it. But let's not act like the Cardinals are a bad team. And I'm not saying the Cardinals are also Super Bowl contenders. I see Mm -hmm. people walking around calling the addition of J.J. Watt puts this defense over the top, and the Cardinals are now Super Bowl contenders. No. No. Yeah, TJ TJ over here is Watt is a fun player to watch, but his best days are behind him. Unless his best season in recent memory is 2018, where it was his last time he played a full season, and he had 17 sacks, I believe. That's pretty good. That's very good. But that was that's going to be three years ago when the season starts when that happened. Mm-hmm. 
And then you're pairing him up with Chandler Jones, who last year had his own little bit of injury concern, and he had one sack last year. Like Chandler Jones, like if you if T, if JJ Watt would have went to the Browns and had Miles Garrett on the other side of the line, or at least down the line, I should say, it's not like Chandler Jones is Miles Garrett. You know what I'm saying? You're not you're not pairing up two studs in their youth. You're t- pairing up two injury prone old people. That's what you're pairing up. <laughs> but the Cardinals do have a lot of good pieces. They were tied for fourth in the league last year with sacks, 48 sacks last season. When that tied, the person they tied for fourth in the league with was Tampa Bay, who obviously just got done winning a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Arizona's putting their money where they just saw the Super Bowl happen. Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl because of pass rush. Terrorized Patrick Mahomes. That's where the Cardinals are putting their money right now. Do they have some pieces on offense that need correcting? Definitely. And maybe they'll fix that. It'll be another year with D Hop and Kyler Murray. There's obviously a disconnection last year that they couldn't figure out. I they're not Super Bowl contenders, but it's definitely a step in the right direction, I think. Yeah. Eh, I'm okay with it. It's I don't know. It, just it doesn't seems... blow your brains like, no. oh my gosh, JJ, watch. See, the, the thing that's getting me is, um, you know, how big of, I realize it's the off season mm-hmm. and big deals need to be made of things. Yeah. But, but JJ Watts getting a little bit older, hasn't made a giant impact in recent memory. And he's, it just doesn't, it, do, it doesn't need to be a big a deal as it's being made out to be. The biggest thing is that he's leaving the team that he won three defensive player of the years with, you know, Mm -hmm. the team that drafted him where he made his name for himself. Right. It's kind of, it's a different approach. Like with Kyle Rudolph will jump the gun, you know, Kyle Rudolph got released from the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Kyle Rudolph's been a Viking forever, Mm -hmm. but they released him, you know, on good terms. It's not like there's any bad blood or anything like that. But it's it, it's a big deal because he was a long time Texan. Kyle Rudolph was a long time Viking, so that's why we need to talk about it. Now it's JJ Watt playing with a new team now. It's a big deal, but it's not really that big a deal when it comes to on the field stuff, right? Like, are you, I mean, correct if I'm wrong, but JJ Watt said that he wants to go to somewhere where a team is a Super Bowl contender. Like, he wants to get that ring. You're right. He said that. Those are words that came out of his mouth. <laughs> so, it's, Arizona's not going to get that, I don't think, in the next year or so. I think they are still, they are talented, but they're still building. So that's where I'm confused a little bit here. Why would Arizona sign him for $31 million for two years when to make him, you know, I think he's overpaid, basically, is what I'm thinking here. Yeah. So Arizona could have, you know, spent a little less money on him if he, if he, if he really, really wanted to go there. He would, have, he would have taken less money, you know, if he would have, you know, worked something out with the team. And the Cardinals should have had the mindset where why would we overpay a veteran defensive end who has shown a decline when they could be getting younger players and keeping their team intact to build on what they already have? Like, it seems like the Cardinals are trying to, they're not, I wouldn't say completely win now mode with J.J. Watt. But you know that's going to be the hype because everyone's calling a Super Bowl contender. Like some right. some people, some people are calling a Super Bowl contenders and stuff like that. So I don't know. To me, it's just like thinking of the Cardinals. Like, what are they doing? Like, you're just playing into the hype. I don't know. It's yeah. The secondary is still sketchy. Yep. And then the offensive line is. You know, the offensive line only allowed, I believe, 11 sacks last year, but that's mainly because Kyler Murray is 
good at running. You know, right. Tyler Murray was running for his life a lot of the season, but he's good at avoiding sacks, so it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Mm-hmm. The, the tight end position is completely useless. Dan Arnold, Max Williams, they make nice plays here and there, but they're not number one tight right. ends on like any other teams, especially not Dan Arnold. I like Max Williams a little bit more, but Dan Arnold, no. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. Like I got done saying, D-Hop and Kyler Murray, they'll be fine, I think. It was a weird off season. They didn't get a chance to really connect, and it showed it during some points during the season. But then Larry Fitzgerald, I I love Larry. I love that man to death. But you ha- <laughs> you got to figure out who's going to be taking his spot, and it, you might need to consider moving on at some point, either asking him to retire or just say, like, we got to make business decisions. Because mm-hmm. Christian Kirk didn't pan out like I thought he was last year. Yep. JJ Nelson didn't pan out. Mm. And Kenyon Drake, Ch- Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds, they just they have a light switch that they're able to flick on and off. But for some reason, it's just like I'm going to go for three touchdowns and 300 yards today. All right, dude, go ahead, go back out there and do it next week. Oh, I ran, I rushed for 50 yards. My bad. Like what? There's no consistency in the backfield. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of problems. I don't think defensive end was one of them, but they just got done right. shoving $31 million for the next two seasons into the position that wasn't an immediate need. So, yep. Now they got to live with it. They have JJ Watt. They can, they can say that they can say we have JJ Watt. That's a fun thing to say. Congratulations. Yeah. Let's say this next piece here. Really kind of look, but I have to make gears with the Cardinals even more. So I, I, I already knew it was a thing, and I was like, "Ooh, that's mm-hmm. weird." And then I read how it came about with what you wrote, and I was like, "Okay." Uh, the warm weather is growing on him. Growing up and playing college ball in Wisconsin, then playing in Houston, he doesn't want to see another snowflake again. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point. It's a very fair point. Cardinals will make the make it to the playoffs and out in the first, maybe the second round if they're lucky. Isn't that what happened this year? They made they are, it to the playoffs are, and no, they were playing for a spot. Oh, because the, 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 the Rams got in, not yeah. the Cardinals. That's right. Yeah, they uh, what lost lat the last five of their seven games. They started six and three and then ended eight and eight. Not great. Yep. Um. Cardinals will make the playoffs only if Russell Wilson gets traded. Otherwise, I don't know if they can outplay the Rams and Seahawks. Yeah, that's the that's the main concern of the Cardinals, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like they did go eight and eight. I think they have the potential to be better than eight and eight, but they have to compete with the Rams and the Seahawks on a weekly basis. Not weekly basis. Well, if you know what I'm saying when I say weekly, they have to compete against their teams. They right. have to get a good record. They have to keep winning game after game because you know the Seahawks and the Rams are both going to be good this year, unless crazy things happen. You know, <laughs> <laughs> unless other things happen, yeah. the Cardinals and the Seahawks will be up. And who knows if the 49ers are able to stay healthy this year? Maybe they're back on top. It's still yeah. a tough division, <clears throat> definitely. So, uh, with that, with all that said, no. The Cardinals are not Super Bowl contenders. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, here you let's 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 get you can yeah, let me know your let me know your thoughts because I, I know you're probably itching at the look at this can. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> go ahead, I'll let you. So on top of JJ Watt signing with the Cardinals, he is also going to be wearing number ninety nine. For the Cardinals, even though it was retired by the Cardinals, um, who had sent the jersey to the rafters in honor of running back Marshall Goldberg. And Goldberg's daughter, Ellen Goldberg Tulos, um, told TMZ Sports that she gives the Cardinals her permission to unretire her father's number in order for Watt to wear it in the 2021 season and beyond. Tulo said of Watt that he has my blessings, and I'm sure my father would be more than delighted for him to carry it on. Watt confirmed Tuesday or today that he had spoke to Tulos and she gave him permission to wear number 99 for the Cardinals. 
You don't unretire numbers. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Like I, if anyone looks up Marshall Goldberg, like I you know, I read another article about him. The dude played both sides of the ball back when the Cardinals were in Chicago. So we're talking the fifties, ages <laughs> ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, because the Cardinals, you know, little history here. The Cardinals were in Chicago until 60 where they went to St. Louis and then in 88, they went to Arizona. Um, but like back then you had running backs that wore these crazy numbers. Like before, I think it wasn't until, you know, we saw Otto Graham, you know, making, you know, making his way through the NFL um, when he had changed from number 60 to 14, because, you know, the NFL come out with a, a you know a jersey based rule you know basically these set of numbers are you're eligible for this these positions um but before that you know you had quarterbacks wearing higher numbers like you would see on the line or on the defensive line and you know it's similar you know it was probably similar to what we see now with college football you know defensive linemen were number two why it's weird I i think it's weird but you know, maybe that's just the that's the history you're seeing from you know early NFL. I don't like the fact that the Cardinals made an exception to let this number be used again when they put it away and retired it for someone who meant something to the organization. Because to me, that's saying that the Cardinals are basically saying, "Eh, Goldberg was okay, but." J.J. Watt's coming in, and he's had the number for a few years now, so I think we're just going to give it to him. You know, it doesn't work like that. you got to stick to the rules. Like, why? Like, if the jerseys in the rafters, like, it's, it's I'm assuming if they have a ring of honor, it's in the ring of honor. Mm-hmm. Like, like all, these, all these ceremonies and processes that you go through to honor a jersey and, and retire a jersey number like that, Mm-hmm. It's not a small feat. No. It's not like you just. It's not like a small deal. Like ah, you know, yeah, this 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 Goldberg guy, we'll just throw it up there because he was a pretty good player. Unless that's what they did, because apparently that's all he meant to him. Apparently, they think JJ Watt is going to be more of a impact on this franchise than than Marshall was. Mm-hmm. It's it's literally just like spitting in the dude's face, and like they yeah. got permission from the daughter, but like. Doesn't seem right. That doesn't what the daughter just probably got approached by because it says here you put a walk confirmed Tuesday he spoke to the daughter. Mm -hmm. Like if you have JJ Watt standing in front of you, are you really gonna be like, "Uh, I'm sorry, Mister JJ, but no, you can't have my dad's number. Like no, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, and I want season tickets too. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's that's how that's gonna happen, right? What what a shame. Mm-hmm. Like how many times in history have you have have teams unretired numbers for players? I would I don't know if there's stats out there for that, but I would be interested to look into that to see how many times that's happened. Mm-hmm. And I guess to play devil's advocate, like maybe back then they thought Marshall Goldberg was a great player, and they, he needed his number retired, and they thought, man, this will be a really great decision. And now, you know, decades down the road. They go, yeah, maybe not. They look back at it and they're like, well, we haven't heard from his family or like maybe he's just not a big part of the organization anymore. Mm-hmm. That's why they decided to do it. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think if it's up there, it has to stay there. Just pick a new number, bro. Do right. 98. Do 98.9. I don't care. Like pick something decimal, else. Decimal, decimal police jersey numbers. <laughs> And like the gall of JJ Watt to be like, hey, I know 99's in the rafters and I've never played for your franchise before, but can I have mm-hmm. that? Like the gall. Right. <laughs> the gall to ask for that. That just makes me more glad the Bills didn't sign him. Do you have a retired 99 for the Bills? No, no. Harrison Phillips wears that one. Oh, hot dog arms. Hot dog arms wouldn't have been wanting to give up his number. Probably not. He probably would have. He probably would have because he's a good guy. And, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a team sport here in Buffalo. So, yeah. Old, old hot dog arms <laughs> would get knocked down a couple a couple digits. He'd be fine with it. Yeah. 
This one kind of surprised me a little bit. Mm-hmm. This because this one I thought this was I, I I know he didn't play that great last season, mm-hmm. but again, like I feel like you have to take everything into account when it's with the COVID off season and when you're bringing in all these new players, you got to expect you know it's just gonna be like there's gonna be a learning curve. A pro, you might have a couple of hiccups when you bring in new players in that kind of an off season. But the Dolphins releasing Kyle Van Noy after one year with the team after giving him. A four-year deal, fifty-one million dollars, which included thirty million guaranteed and a twelve million dollars signing bonus. That's kind of shocking. Mm-hmm. The move's expected to free up nine point seven million dollars in cap space. Granted, it says they will try to trade him before officially releasing him, and then even then, they might release him if no one takes him. He clears waivers, whatever the case may be. They sign him for a lower price deal. That could save them cap space. I feel like if they would have done that with three years left on his deal, they could have just renegotiated it and put some of the money later into the into the contract. Mm-hmm. It's shocking. I don't think Kyle Van is a bad player. Right. He's only 29 years old. Whew. It was a little surprising. Like and the he Bears a- also released Buster Screen. Oh, yeah. Their corner as well earlier. I mean... Mm-hmm. This this is all strictly because of the new lowering of the cap. First time it's right. ever happened in NFL history. It's not, it's, pr- it's projected. I think is it officially 180 million dollars now? I believe so, yeah. I mean, that put more than half the league above the cap and everyone's just scurrying and trying to get under it because no one wants to pay penalties on that. Mhm. But man, this I mean, he was your middle linebacker. This was supposed to be the guy that's supposed to run your defense. That's a tough. He lot. was a he was a captain for him last year. Yeah, M- normally your middle linebackers are, but still, I, yeah, I, I, I guess right. I, <laughs> I get like, though. yeah, the guy commanded the defense, and they're like, "Yeah, good talk. See you later." <laughs> Oof. Like, I, I feel did, like he had some injury problems. Did he have injury problems last season? He was out a few games. I can't remember what for. But the guy did have six sacks last year. It's a big deal. That's that's pretty impressive for a linebacker. Sad to see. I, I mean, the Dolphins' defense was very up and down. Mm-hmm. So I could see. I would. I, I, I'm not that into the Dolphins. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not here tracking stats. But mm-hmm. if I want to see the stats of if he was out for a game. Or if he was in for the game, the difference that the defense performed, and I did right. not pull—I did not pull those stats. Apparently, obviously, yeah, I'm not going to plan on doing that. But you see my, where I'm going with that, though. Mm-hmm. If the team really saw, like, are we really going to soak up nine point seven million dollars in cap space for a guy that we just—if we just didn't see enough spark out of him this last season? He was supposed to be our captain, and they just said, "I don't know. We just didn't see him as a captain for that much money." Right. Well, that's very possible. You know, you know, the Dolphins already have three linebackers on defense there before him, you know, before Van Noy. Um, so, you know, maybe they're like, oh, well, he's kind of the odd man out, but we signed him for a four year deal. So I think that's why, I think that's why they're not just, they're not just releasing him, you know, automatically. They're going to, they're going to try and trade him. They want to get some kind of compensation for that. But, you know, he had, let's see, he was a second-round pick to the Lions, who then traded him to the Patriots. You know, he had a good three and a half years for the New England, and, you know, last year when he left New England, he was, like, top of the charts for free agents. Yeah. And then get signed by the Dolphins. So, it you know, maybe, the Dol- you know, it's a little surprising that maybe he didn't perform as well going from New England to Miami because, you know, he reunited with Brian Flores, you know, Flores was his position position coach for a while there in New England, but I don't know. It's a little shocking. I'm without a doubt. I so, wouldn't be surprised if he, he'll he'll find something somewhere to land without uh without too much of a problem. But a little surprising for the Dolphins to let that go. And I think, if memory serves, the Dolphins have quite the draft capital this season this this year. That is very oh, true. Yeah. If they just said, "Man, we can find another you in the draft with one of our good gajillion picks," 
and then pay him like a tenth of what we're paying you. Right. You know, that's a possibility as well, which I wouldn't doubt. They have two first round yeah. picks. They're picking early in the second round. I, I could, I could, the, the pick kind of pans out for them if they can find, I don't know what their draft needs are. Well, you said they already had linebackers on the roster before he even got there. Mm-hmm. But if they're looking to replace them, get some depth, younger depth, they have the draft picks to do it. Yep. After 10 seasons, the Vikings are releasing Kyle Rudolph, tight end. And another shocking move on this Tuesday in the NFL offseason. Uh, he was set for the second season of a four-year, $36 million deal. He was set to make $7.65 million this season. They cut him. It'll save him $5 million in cash space and $8 million in cash for 2021. Rudolph had previously made it clear he wasn't going to take a pay cut, and the Vikings, therefore, made it a cut. A roster cut instead of a pay cut. It's not a roster cut. Mm-hmm. Get smoked, fool. <laughs> I We've seen Kyle Rudolph's production plummet over the past two, three seasons. Yeah. He's hurt me in fantasy numerous times. Yeah, he's supposed to be like the go-to guy, and we've still seen him like throughout the year. He still makes those amazing plays. He Mm -hmm. made two, it was probably two touchdown catches this year that were one-handed back in the end zone, like ESPN top 10 kind of plays. He's just not consistent. I don't think that's his fault. I think it's the Vikings' fault. They kind of got rid of him in the offense somehow for some reason. And we have just not heard from him the past couple of seasons. And it's unfortunate because he's a great guy. I always love watching him play. He was always a top guy in fantasy. You know, he would be the guy that you'd draft one of your first tight ends. Mm-hmm. He's top, probably a top five fantasy tight end and then just tapered off into nothingness. Yep. It's unfortunate. But longtime Viking. He put an article out on there on the Players Tribune, I believe it is, to thank Minnesota and their their his ten seasons with them. What does that put him at for age? He's definitely in his thirties. Was he thirty one, thirty two? Should be thirty, yeah, thirty one, thirty two. Is about yeah. He's still got some spunk in him. He'll land on his feet. Yeah. He's definitely now. He's not playing the starter role. He's playing definitely playing in rotation role. Yeah, I would. I would two, think, but two tight ends set rotate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, come to Seattle. <laughs> Seattle is in desperate need of a tight end. I'm gonna say either that or the Bears. You know, both the Bears and Seahawks like to dra- like to pick up t- tight ends. So no one cares about the Bears. Don't waste your time. At the, just don't. Don't go to the Bears. Oh. Isn't aren't the Bears are the Bears and the Vikings in the same division? Yes. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go to the Bears. Don't don't do that. No no one wants to see that happen to you, Kyle. We want to see you succeed. Um Packers GM Brian Brian G. Brian G. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say that either. Gunst 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 has expressed expressed interest in using the franchise tag on running back Aaron Jones. They only have until March 9th to do so, and it'll pay him about $8 million this season, or they'll let him walk and retain Jamal Williams to pair up with A.J. Dillon. The Packers have not used a franchise tag since 2010. Yeah, Aaron Jones is definitely the top target for the franchise tag. I don't know who else they would use it on. Obviously, they're not a fan of using it. It's been 10 years since they've used right. it. This will be the 11th offseason with a franchise mm-hmm. tag, whether they use it or not. Um, $8 million is not that bad for Aaron Jones. Yeah. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I don't know if Aaron Jones will be happy with playing for $8 million. That's just kind of where the running back market is. You're either a stud. That's making twelve, thirteen, fourteen million a season. Who right. probably doesn't? They probably don't deserve that money. I'm talking about Zeke, <laughs> CMC, Dalvin Cook. Um, and then you got all the people at the bottom of the barrel. That that it, it evens out to eight mil, which makes sense. Aaron Jones for eight million for a season, but then if they if they let him walk, Jamal Williams and AJ Dillon, 
It's just not the same without Aaron Jones and having that threat back there. It just doesn't seem like the same. It Right. It doesn't seem the same, but I also, I see what the point that the Packers could be making by not tagging him because you had, you had a three headed monster. It gets a little tough for the NFL. I think for NFL offenses, you know, when you're constantly rotating running backs and, you know, having that, you know, need Aaron Rodgers to be comfortable with who's back there, possibly, you know, picking up the blind, the, the speedy edge rusher that gets around the tackle or, you know, picking up the blitz up the middle. So maybe I, you know, I really thought A.J. Dillon had some promise, you know, from the games, the little bit that I saw of the Packers this year. So maybe that's where the Packers are thinking, you know what, we, we have something steady in Jamal Williams. We know what he has. We have something, you know, really well in Aaron Jones, but we had this guy who was for a lot less money right now who's showing potential that, you know, we think we can tap. And let's be honest here. The Packers are definitely not fans of paying to give Aaron Rodgers more weapons. Right. So Aaron <laughs> Jones is probably this <laughs> Aaron be, Jones uh, is leaving then. <laughs> yeah. This is this makes sense. Put it that way. <laughs> Aaron Jones is leaving and the Packers are gonna sign Cam Newton to battle out with Ooh. Jordan Love and Aaron. Aaron there Rogers. you go. Spent <laughs> yeah, and give him the full eight mil that yep. they would have given to Aaron Jones. I like how this is panning out. This makes sense. I'm for it. Very nice. Very nice. I just I, I feel bad for Aaron. if if they really do let Aaron Jones go, I can just see Aaron Rodgers just just plummet off a cliff. Is they finally have like a real weapon in the backfield? Mm-hmm. Like Aaron Jones is a monster. Jamal Williams was good. He's not Aaron Jones. AJ Dillon, we haven't seen enough out of him yet. We just haven't. Right. I mean, he had fresh legs when he came in for those more mm-hmm. snaps near the end of the season. And, you know, other teams are beaten down. It's late in the year, and this kid hasn't played, like, all season. I don't think that's a fair assessment of his talents. If he, whether, you know, he played, the people thought he played well, he played okay, whatever the case may be. So, I don't know. I just, I don't understand why you wouldn't, you wouldn't at least tag him. One man's opinion. Yeah. Just, just do it. And if it doesn't pan out, let them go next year, and then you can start just blowing everything up because that's what they're probably going to have to do. Jordan Love's got to play at some point. You don't you don't move up in a draft in the first round to get this quarterback unless you have a plan for him to play somewhere in the next two, three seasons. Yeah. If he misses the first year, okay, that makes sense. If he misses the second year, He's, and you, you know, you better win a Super Bowl, or we have to have a discussion for season three. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. A lot of question marks over there in Green Bay still. So that's pretty much all of our NFL news. For a main topic, I just came up with some some stuff that's happening around the league, mm-hmm. mainly trade rumors. This is the stuff that I've been posting about on social media. This can be like rapid fire. I just kind of want to get your opinion because this is stuff that all I've right. been. I haven't been able to talk to people about sports in like two weeks. So I need to get this stuff off my chest. <laughs> I saw something that said a slash or multiple teams. I don't know what they were trying to say. You know, whether it was multiple GMs have said this, just one GM went to a guy and said this, but there have been people that have reported that some people have said that they are willing to give up their entire draft for Deshaun Watson. Basically, you get all of our picks this year. We draft no one, but you give us Deshaun Watson. Now That's I'm, terrible. I worked see I, like on when you first when you say it, it's like, yeah, that's stupid. Why would you ever do that? But then I look I look around at like the teams that would want Deshaun Watson and I look around their teams. And I'm like, okay, so my first, my immediate thought was the Panthers because I, I really thought mm-hmm. that's where he was going with all the cat space they're clearing up. But right. it, I think if the Texans were willing to deal him, he would already be a Panther. But, you know, here we are. Like The Panthers already drafted a great defense last seat, last year's draft. They drafted all defensive players, and pretty much all of them panned out. Jer- or Jeremy Chin, I believe is his name. Mm-hmm. 
he, he was close to rookie defensive player of the year. Yeah. He was in contention. Derek Brown on the defensive line. I mean, everyone they drafted panned out. And then the offensive side of the ball, Christian McCaffrey went healthy good. Teddy Bridgewater, well, he wouldn't be there anymore. This is about discussion for Deshaun Watson. But you got right. Robbie Anderson. You got DJ Moore. Granted, you could use a tight end, maybe one more wide receiver. You could bolster some of that offensive line. But at the end of the day, your team's pretty well put together. And if you add Deshaun Watson to that team, are you a contender? Maybe. Maybe you don't need draft picks if you're already a contender if you add Deshaun Watson. Now, the other team I put down just grabbed another Texan. We already got DeAndre Hopkins over there. We got J.J. Watt. Hell, let's bring another Texan. Let's give up our entire draft because our defense is already a very good pass rush. Questionable secondary. Hmm. I get that. But strong pass rush. The offense has pieces. We already have D Hop. Maybe a, with a better quarterback than Kyler Murray, like Deshaun Watson, we can get Christian Kirk involved, Larry Fitzgerald. I get it. Old. He's serviceable. And then again, same thing as the Panthers. You need another tight end. You need a stronger offensive line. But you see what I'm saying here? These are teams that if you add Deshaun Watson, might become contenders, even if they don't get more draft picks. It would be insane, and it'd be something we've never seen before. Yeah. But, you know, what? I'm, it, it's not insane if you just sit on it for a second. When you first hear it out loud, you're like, oh, my God, why would you ever even say something like that? And then you sit on it, you're like, that's not as crazy for some teams as it sounds. Yeah, I, I see your point there. Now, I would question teams that have like more than seven draft picks to be quite, to be willing to give up their entire draft. Like, if if a team has like four or five draft picks because they've you know they've done, they have made trades in the past few years and like they're they're pretty set. You know, I would look at those teams. You know, I don't know those teams are off hand to see you know, who has the least amount of draft picks this year. Those are teams that, you know, if they needed Deshaun, a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, then I could, I would expect that. Seattle Seahawks have four draft picks. So trade Russell Wilson and your draft picks for 2021 for Deshaun Watson. There we go. There's a thing. That's probably not good for Deshaun Watson. It's not, a, it's not, I mean, he's mobile ish. <laughs> <laughs> he can. He's more mobile than Russell Wilson these days, <laughs> because of the punishment Russell Wilson has taken on the last few years. Have fun taking forty sacks a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, like, I wouldn't want the Dolphins to make that trade. They have two first round right. picks this year. Like, one's a top five. Yeah, the other's what, like top maybe top twenty. I'm not sure. Hmm. I wouldn't want them to do it because they're giving up a lot. Right. Two first rounds this year, a bunch of other picks that they've gained because they've played it smart. Got rid of all mm-hmm. their guys. They, they've built up this draft capital since for last year, this year, and even for next year. Yep. I wouldn't want to give that up. Same so, with the Jets. Same you with want, the Jets. You would want, want them to give up their two first round picks. Right. That that's like asking battle. That's asking the Texans to build a, build a super team, basically. Yeah. So... I just thought that was interesting. It doesn't sound mm-hmm. as crazy, but it depends on the team. Right. And we already, we just brought up Teddy Bridgewater. There's been rumors of him going to the 49ers. This seems like one of those trades where it would just be Teddy Bridgewater straight up for Jimmy G. Because, honestly, I don't think one is that much better than the other. Mm-hmm. I think Teddy Bridgewater might be able to throw a deep ball a little better. I think that's where the Panthers' offense was at its best. Was when he could, when he could hit Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore deep. Mm-hmm. If the defense was giving it to them, he took advantage of it. And as we all know very well, Jimmy G is not very strong in the deep ball. Probably could have won a Super Bowl if he was a little bit stronger in the deep ball, but he is not. So, Teddy Bridgewater to the 49ers. like it, hate it, don't want it to happen. Jimmy G to the Panthers, eh? Don't care. I like it. It makes sense to me. I bet, you know, I could see Teddy Bridgewater being in that top 10 quarterback, you know, 
talk. You know, if he goes to the 49ers, gets under the you know the Shanahan system a little bit there, I think it's more favorable favorable for Teddy Bridgewater than Garoppolo. You know, has him playing in that system. Send you know send Jimmy G to Carolina. You have a running back there. The running back game has worked for Jimmy G. Work the play action. You know, and it makes sense. I wouldn't be opposed to this kind of a deal. You know, I could look forward to something like this. Yeah, I'm definitely not against it. Not at all. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. And if for no other reason than the fact the 49ers can finally get out from under Jimmy G, because this is just toxic. Mm-hmm. This, this is exactly what happened last year. If the 49ers come out in the public and they say, we're committed to Jimmy Garoppolo. He's our quarterback. He's going to be our starter. He's going to be the man under center. He's our leader. But then shit like this comes out. (laughs) And then this happens. And they say the 49ers are kicking the tires on quarterbacks. (laughs) And it's the same thing that happened last year. This is why all this toxicity started. It started last year when Tom Brady was looking for a new team. They kicked the tires on Tom Brady. It's like they, they come out here and say, Jimmy G's our guy. Jimmy G's our leader. Jimmy G's our quarterback. Oh, but that Tom Brady guy over there, like he, he's looking pretty good. Huh? What about you? Can't have you can't. What's the saying? You can't have your cake, cake and eat cake it, too. It too. Like you, you got to pick one. Either mm-hmm. he's your leader or you're kicking tires. You're trying to figure out a way to get rid of him. You can't just because all you're doing right now is pissing them off. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and it's creating a bad relationship. He's coming off a year with major injuries to himself and his teammates. You can't be going around, hey, um, like publicly. This is public knowledge. Hey, how's that Teddy Bridgewater guy doing? We're kind of sick of this guy, but you're our leader. We like you, but that Teddy Bridgewater guy, like, is he is he available? (laughs) You can't have both Forty (laughs) ers So I mean that that's what's really been getting to me. That right there. Because it's I, if I'm a GM, man, I can't let this become public knowledge if I'm kicking tires on quarterbacks. Because it's two years in a row now. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's just the first time this has happened. Two years in a row, they're kicking tires on Tom Brady. They're kicking tires on Teddy Bridgewater. Toxic. And then Russell Wilson came out with his list. <laughs> and to be fair, Russell Wilson does not want to be traded. He has said this is I'm not looking for a trade. I'm not demanding a trade. It's mostly his camp. Most of this is coming from Russell Wilson's camp saying, well, he's going to be traded if you don't fix things or you don't let him be a part of the offensive plant game plan and whatever they're saying. It feels it just feels like kind of weird, like how Russell Wilson's playing the nice guy, but the camp is playing like good cop, bad cop. Like Russell Wilson saying the good, like all the good things like, oh, I want to be a Seahawk. And the camp's like, he's going to be traded. (laughs) <laughs> His list consists of the Saints, the Raiders, the Cowboys, and the Bears. And, you know, just to be mentioned that he wants to be a Bears quarterback puts him on the top three quarterbacks in Bears history. <laughs> like, like you, you have, like, whoever their number one guy is, the number two, and it's like Russell Wilson wanting to be a Bear, and then you keep the list going. It's, that's that's where we're at with that. Oh. Bears fans are over here like, oh, my God, trade everything. Get rid of all of them. Give us Russ. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we're looking at. Uh, Poor it's, an interesting, it's an interesting list. It is. It really is. Like, I don't see any rhyme or reason to it, though. Like The Saints, with the Saints, he gets to play with Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. Like, that's a stacked team. That makes a lot of sense. Right. He gets Sean Payton. Like it, mm-hmm. the Saints make sense. The Raiders have a very good offensive line, like top five offensive line, whether people want to believe that or not. They they have a very strong offensive line. Mm-hmm. He gets to move to Las Vegas. You know, you have to take a lot. Of, you have to take with at his age being yeah. married to Ciara or Sierra, whatever her name is. Sierra, yeah. Is it Sierra? Okay. Yeah. Like moving to Las Vegas, that's kind of just like a, a family move. That's a power move for the mm-hmm. Wilpin family. Cowboys again, another power move. It's it, it commercials. Like you make, you make millions upon millions mm-hmm. upon millions just being a Cowboys quarterback. Whether he actually wants to play for them or not, that's who knows. And then there's the Bears. 
<laughs> um, Allen Robinson's going to be gone here soon. Mm-hmm. The defense is hit or miss. It's I don't know if the Bears' defense is good or not. I can't tell you that. Um, the offensive line is uh, their running backs. I don't know who their wide receivers are. I don't know what. I don't know why he wants to be a bear. I couldn't tell you. I mean, he went to Wisconsin. Is he from that area? Where is he from? It's a good question. Maybe he's from, maybe he is from Chicago. That I mean, I don't I don't know where he's from. That, that that's the only team that seems like it would be like a hometown team logical reason because the other three have talent. You know, the Saints, like you said, with Sean Payton, Alvin Kamara, and Michael Thomas, defense is decent. Raiders have Virginia. good talent. Then I have no effing clue why he wants to play for the Bears. Maybe just to give the Bears, maybe he's just screwing with the Bears fans. Maybe he's just literally sitting here like, you know what? I'm going to, like, these are my three real teams, but just tell Bears fans I want to play for them. It'd be really funny to watch their reaction. (laughs) That's all. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But at the end of the day, Russell, I don't think Russell was being traded. It's just. It doesn't make sense to trade him. And then who came out and said uh, one of one of these talking heads came out and said something that I kind of agree with. You know, I would fire Pete Carroll. I would fire everyone in the front office. I would fire everybody before I would trade Russell Wilson. It took a little extreme. I wouldn't want to fire John Schneider. I love Johnny. Hmm. Pete Carroll. If I'm John Schneider and I have the my finger ready to push one of two buttons, it's the trade Russell will button, trade Russell Wilson button, or the fire Pete Carroll button. I'm pushing the fire Pete Carroll button. That's, yeah. You know. I feel like if you're just the notion of trading him is like, as he talks of saying, yeah, we're done for a few years now. We're just going we oh, to rebuild. Like a, <laughs> it's a give up mood for sure. Yep. And then you waste, then you might as well just trade DK Metcalf while you're at it. Cause you're just going to waste yep. the rest of his career. He'll turn into, he'll literally be another Calvin Johnson now. Cause he'll waste his, the, he'll waste the prime of his career. Yep. After that, I don't care about anyone else. He's the only person that actually has potential on this team. <laughs> like Bobby Wagner will probably just retire. KJ Wright's yeah. already a free agent. Yeah, everyone else doesn't matter. <laughs> There's no one else on this team that's <laughs> worth a damn. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think he's going to be traded. I think this is just something to get people through the hard times, and then the 2021 season starts up and Russell is behind center. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to be the bearer of boring news, but that's just the reality of it. Um, and then we already talked about I, we got to go back in time because Durf wasn't here for the past two weeks. And I we figured we did talk about the Stafford Golf Shade trade because that was before then. That was a long time ago. Um, Carson Wentz trade to Indy. What's his, What's your stance on Carson Wentz going to Indy? We all knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. There was never another team that he was going to go to. And if anyone bought into any rumors of any other team wanting him, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Not to call you dumb if you thought he was going somewhere else, but right. but uh, yeah, he was only going to Indy. But, yeah, yeah. That, was the only, that was the only option. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought he was going to Indy, you know, for sure. And... As you know, as much as it makes sense because of the whole, you know, the Frank the Frank Reich, you know, relationship there with him, you know, from coming from Philadelphia, that 2017 season they had, and it it, it makes it makes sense on paper to work. I don't think it does though. I think Carson Wentz will play worse than Philip Rivers Whew. behind this Colts offensive line. Oh my! Because he can't make the throws that we've seen the last couple of years with the Eagles, so his he has this, this really bad decision decision making. You know, I don't know. I just don't think it's going to work. I don't don't think it's going to work out. He's probably a great asset for the team. It's just not going to pan out. I don't think. 
I mean, it, I think it was definitely worth a try. Yeah. I mean, this, this just because of Frank Reich. If Frank Reich cannot, because to before Frank Reich was only what the offensive coordinator with the Eagles mm-hmm. when they won that Super Bowl, and you know he was like basically married to Carson Wentz. He loved him, and they were best buds. Mm-hmm. Now he's the head coach. He has complete control over everything. If he can't put, if he can't create this offense to revolve around Carson Wentz and just be perfect for Carson, and he can't fix him mentally, and if he can't fix him physically, then Carson Wentz's his career's over. This is it. Yeah. I mean, if if this doesn't pan out in the next season or two, he might as well just hang up the cleats because even if he's a backup. It, He'll just be like the next Josh McCowan. He'll just be he'll just be going around hanging out, having fun. Yeah. Definitely. This is this is it for him. So he better figure it out. And if he doesn't, yeah, it's <laughs> over. I, I think it'll be okay. I already talked about it the last time when I you know when I was on here talking last week. Mm-hmm. I think I think it'll be better than the Phillip Rivers situation. I don't think he'll be that bad. <laughs> Because <laughs> he does have Frank Reich helping him. He does yeah. have a better offensive line. There are some concerns with weapons. You know, uh, T.Y. Hilton probably won't be there. Even if he is there, T.Y. Hilton's not who he used to be. It's just not really that much of an asset right. anymore. Yeah, they ha- who, who is there with number one wide receiver then now? Michael Pittman? The second, second year receiver now? Yeah. Who's not going to give up his number? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, which is fun, but I don't think it's enough. Right, so uh, I don't know. It's I don't I don't think Indy is going to be Super Bowl contenders with Carson Wentz. I think they can, they can get back to the playoffs though. My take. All right. And then last but not least, just for fun, this was this was going to be like a little game show I was going to put on for us to wrap up the show. Is Cam Newton better? Then the current 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Cue the game show music. Darren Clark, what's going on, man? What's up, dude? Yeah, uh, Cam Newton came out and said that he's better than, you know, he's he's top 32, basically, is what he said. He's not saying he's the best. He's, not, he's saying he's not the 33rd best. He's saying he's somewhere in the 32. <laughs> this is basically what he's saying. So I was gonna run. I was gonna run down the list here for you. Let's let's figure this out. All right. Let's be specific about this. All right. We'll be like, we'll break it down and we'll figure out if Cam Newton is a top thirty-two quarterback in the league. Okay. All right. You ready for this? Let's do I don't it. actually have game show music, but this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I would. I, I would love to have a little game show music in the background playing right now. I, I wonder what I have. That's too loud. I can't play that. All right. We're going to start and see if Josh Allen. Or, oh, my God. I'm looking at Bill. Sorry. We're going to see if Cam Newton can be an AFC East quarterback. All right. Can he start for the Buffalo Bills? No. Can he start for the Miami Dolphins? No. I would say no, just strictly because even if they don't keep Tua, they have a top five draft pick. They'll probably end up with another quarterback. They don't need Cam. Right. Then they have the New England Patriots. Can Cam Newton be a New England Patriot? That's it. We literally just watched it. We just right. watched it happen. Yeah. There's, yeah, no. I mean, they have an opening. <laughs> so, I mean, he could be there. He could slide back into that starting spot. Yeah. But, but there's we've already on, seen that can't work. There's backups on other teams that are better than him starting. So, yeah. Hey, let's let's throw Nick Foles in there or something. Come on, Nick <laughs> yeah. Foles ain't busy. He got Mitchell Trubisky in front of him. Um, <laughs> can he be the starter for the New York Jets? Is he better than Sam Darnold? No, no. All right, let's move over to the AFC North. He's not going to be an AFC's quarterback, so let's try the AFC North. Will he be a Baltimore Raven? Nope. Okay, Cincinnati Bengals. No. No. They're 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 too they're focused on Joe Burrow right now. They don't want to. Why would the Bengals bring in someone like that who could mess up with Joe Burrow? Mess Joe, mess with Joe Burrow's head to becoming a better quarterback. Yeah, like why is Cam here? I'm your guy. You don't need Cam Newton. 
Right. It doesn't make sense. All right. So can Cam Newton be the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns? Nah. This was, a, this was an interesting one. Can he be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, they just signed Dwayne Haskins. So, no. Okay, good point. I didn't think about I forgot about Dwayne Haskins. It's a good point. I was thinking, man, he might be better than Mason Rudolph. I'm not sure. Okay. All right, so he's not going to be a starting quarterback for the AFC North. Let's try the AFC South, the Houston Texans. Currently, no. In, in current state. <laughs> uh, Ryan Francis, was going on? Darren Clark, I thought this guy was some kind of wonder kid a couple years ago. Did he fizzle? Oh, yeah. Ever since that Super Bowl loss, it's he's never been the same. Pie or cake? I think we're both pie. We've made that very clear in the 2021 season. I, I think. Right? Are we? I, I think I'm cake. Oh, are you cake? Yeah, I think I'm cake. I feel like we didn't make this clear. Because yeah. I forgot, apparently. You are a cake person. Yeah. Give me that frosting. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, the frosting. Okay. <laughs> then pizza or flatbread? Pizza for days. Yeah, pizza. Pizza for days. Uh, the Colts. No. Nah. Not with Carson once there now. And here we go. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Current now, to, rot. Current you have roster. to approach just a little differently, right? Because of the situation. Basically, I feel like this is the same situation with the Bengals. They have the first overall pick. They're going to end up with Trevor Lawrence. Is Cam Newton better than Trevor Lawrence? No, probably not. Tre- I would. I would Trevor- assume not. Lawrence has much better pocket presence than Cam Newton has showed this past season. Much better accuracy and arm strength, too. You are. Darren says we're both cake or pie people. The only thing that matters is what's in front of you. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's true. Uh, The Tennessee Titans. Cam Newton with the Tennessee Titans. Better than Ryan Tannehill. No. No. Uh, Ryan Tannehill. I would say Ryan Tannehill is the king of play action pass, so and he's good at it. Cam is not. Ryan Tannehill only needs to throw 10 passes a game and he'll have three touchdowns and 400 yards. Like, he has to do it in 10 passes. It's easy. <laughs> the AFC West. How about the Denver Broncos? Oh, that's a toughie. That is a toughie. Because they don't have a lot going on over there right now. Yeah, Drew Locke is kind of, he's very hit or miss. He's still learning a lot, and he gets frustrated very, very easily. But so does Cam Newton. And how, many, Cam how, how many times have we seen Cam Newton blow up in front of the media? <laughs> yeah. Oh. You had to simmer on that one a little bit. Is Cam Newton better than Drew Locke? Could Cam Newton be the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos right now? I don't think he could, though. You don't think I don't think yeah. he I don't think he could scramble out of those those rushing passing pass rush situations that they currently need Drew Lock to try to do. And they're really a, a deep ball team. They're trying to copy the yeah. Chiefs. They need to be fast. I don't know if he has the arm to handle that. He definitely does not have the arm to go deep. So I'm gonna go no on that one. All right, um, we're gonna skip the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> That's an automatic no. <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders. Nah, I like Car. I dare Car better. I think there's a lot of unjustified hate for for Car. He's he's not he's not a flashy quarterback. I think that's why no. he gets the hate. He's he's he is what you get, and then you know make the team work around him. Yeah, he makes he, he, he reminds he does. you of Sid from Toy Story, right? Is that his name? Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's Derek Carr. Oh, I think that was a meme recently. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's where I remember it from. Yeah, it was good times, good times. The the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, he's not replacing rookie of the year, so. Probably not. No. Probably not. Yeah. How about, okay, so he's not going to be an AFC quarterback. His best chances are re-signing with the Patriots. 
um, or replacing Drew Locke with the Broncos. Those are probably his best bets. But we still disagree because both of those teams, the Patriots are ready to move on to the future, and Drew Locke will probably still get another chance or be competing with a rookie for this year's draft. So we're going to move to the NFC. Can Cam Newton be the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? No. I would have more faith. I have more faith in Andy Dalton than I do at Cam Newton. Oof. Shots fired. How about the New York Giants? Ride or no. die with Danny Dimes. That's that's the Giants right now. They are definitely riding with Danny Dimes right now. <laughs> they put he, too much stock into this kid. We need to <laughs> He's shown potential. It's just trying to Jason Garrett just needs to unlock the continuous talent. And then, you know, let's get Danny Dimes to that above just just above Eli Manning average level. I think that's fine. possible. I think it is too. Like the Giants don't have a good defense. They mm-hmm. don't have a running game. They barely have off they barely have any weapons. I say they don't have a running game because Saquon's constantly hurt. That's the only reason I say that. <laughs> right. Like, I don't I'm not saying he's bad at football, but he just can't stay on the field. Mm-hmm. When he's not there, they have no running game. So he's just been dealt a bad hand. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. We just it's like a Sam Darnold situation. Right. It's been hard to see the best out of him because of the franchise he's with. Um, how about the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, I've seen a little bit of Jalen Hurts, and I like him. He plays a, a lot better now than I've seen Cam Newton play. Yeah, he's a young gun. He's like a, just a younger, shorter Cam Newton. He's he's kind of physical. He runs fast. He's all mm. over the place. He's throwing the ball well. How about Washington? This one gets a little interesting. Yeah, I mean, what they, what, are the, what are we looking at? Taylor Heineke? Heineke? Heineke. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. That's it, because Alex Smith's going to be gone here soon. Yeah, he's supposed to get released in the next couple of days, which is yeah. surprising, but not surprising, you know, with the the recent article that resurfaced about, you know, the Washington football team wasn't super excited to see him come back. Yeah, that's like, hey, thanks for thanks for being here. What the hell is he doing here? I thought he was supposed to lose his life. <laughs> yeah. Why is he still why is he walking in here right now? What is happening? Oh, they, 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 they already bought like the ceremonial stuff. Like we we're gonna have a parade for him. Like, what the <laughs> hell is this all about? Oh, they 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 benched Dwayne Haskins and Haskin then said, "Hey, is that Alex Smith guy around here somewhere? Hey, where'd he go? Did he go get popcorn or something? He's come on, we need him for the game." He's up in the stands with his wife, still in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on down. We need you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark him down as a yes, just because I don't even know who their quarterback really is. Yeah, I would give him a yes there. That's the only one I think, but we'll continue anyways. Uh, the NFC North, we have the Bears. Hmm. I don't think he's better than. I mean, Mitchell. I don't think he's at least shown some kind of truth. And then right. Mitch Bowles has and been he's not, here and there. Yeah. I don't think he's better than both. With whoever they go with, I don't think Cam Newton's going to overtake either one. Right. Of them. No. I think if, well, I mean, Chicago was where I, you know, I had seen Newton going last year, you know, before Nick Foles comes into the picture and mm-hmm. whatnot. So, yeah, no for the Bears. How about the Detroit Lions? Is he better than Jared Goff? No. Jared Goff is iffy, but not that iffy. Right. How about the Packers? How about the nah. Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's better than Kirk Cousins. No. Kirk Cousins is, you know, he plays the minimal role as much as possible. He's like a poor man's Tannehill. He thrives yeah. off of play action. He doesn't do it as well, but he thrives off of yeah. play action. But if you ask him to do anything other than play action, you're going for a bad time. Right. Yeah. Um, before we move to the NFC South, my parents said, hot off the press, Ezekiel Elliott trade for Russell Wilson. Yeah, no, absolutely not. 100% no. 100% pass, 100% no, 100% Absolutely not. 
I don't even think the Seahawks want that trade because they already have Chris Carson, Rashad Penny. They re-signed Alex Collins. They don't. They yeah. don't want. It. They don't want Elliott in his bloated contract. Um, the <laughs> NFC South. We got the Atlanta Falcons. Is he better than Matt Ryan? No, probably not. Matt Ryan can still throw the ball deep and mostly accurate. It's so like I'm a ha- fan of Ryan. I'm not a fan of Matt Ryan, but it's right. like. I don't know. He's not like Cam. If you're going to put Cam Newton and Ryan and uh, Matt Ryan next to each other in their current forms, I've seen a lot more. At least, at least Matt Ryan is still throwing for like what four thousand yards. Yeah, Maybe not that much. Thirty. I don't know. I don't know. He's still doing well. Mm-hmm. At least he threw more touchdowns than in a division opponent in his home stadium. Yeah, it's a Josh. It's a Josh Allen thing. I was I was pumping up your quarterback there. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he didn't he throw more touchdown passes in New England Stadium than uh, Cam Newton? Probably. I think that was a wouldn't stat su- from last year, wasn't it? Wouldn't, su- wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, because he was like they, three or four or something that that game on that Monday night game. Yeah. Yeah. Big game. Big game. How about the Panthers? Going back to his little hometown thing, there's old. old no, nah, I don't think he's better than Bridgewater. And besides that, I don't think he could go back there. <laughs> Fans will run him out of town. <laughs> How about the Saints? Oh. Who, are we, who are we considering the Saints starting quarterback right now? I don't think he's better than any three of them. Probably. Drew Brees, Winston, or or Taysom Hill. I don't think he beats out any of them. Oh, I'm he, not that yeah. big fan of Taysom Hill, but... At least Taysom Hill seems a little bit. Me- I think I think Taysom Hill is more athletic than Cam Newton these days. I know that's yeah. kind of saying something. Depends on who you ask, but hmm. I, I I've I think I've seen more out of Taysom Hill than I did out of Cam Newton last year when they at least when he was starting for those few games. Yeah. How about the Buccaneers? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think You're even, telling me Cam Newton's not better than Tom Brady. <laughs> He's not better than Mike Glennon. Or I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna Glennon, make, playing Gabbert. I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna clip this for our social media. Dude. I think Cam Newton is better than Tom Brady and can t- take over the starting role for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <sighs> clip it, chat. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> that, that team won't miss a beat with Cam Newton at quarterback. And you'll cost them a tenth of the price. Oh, <laughs> oh God. How about this? The NFC West. The last, we've, we've had one team we think you can take over, and that's Washington so far. we got four teams left. Mm-hmm. we got the Arizona Cardinals. No. we got the Los Angeles Rams. No. we got the San Francisco 49ers. Eh, probably not, though. Probably not. And then the Seattle Seahawks. No. So Cam Newton said he's better than 32 quarterbacks right now. He's better than the 32 quarterbacks that are starting. And we came up, when he says that, I I guess I should get the exact words he said, because I don't think he said he's better than all 32. He just thinks he deserves to be a part of the 32. Mm-hmm. which would place them pretty much at number 32, which would be on the Washington football team above Tyler Heineke, Taylor Heineke, whatever his name is. Taylor Heineke? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that is where we yeah. would place Cam Newton. That is it. So maybe there's some truth to what he said. There's a there's a minor amount of truth to what Cam Newton said. Should he be a starter? Sure. But guess what? It's going to be with Washington. <laughs> you know, Taylor Heineke played a pretty good game against that Buccaneers defense. But how many times have we seen this crazy situation where, like, oh, here comes this rookie that no one's heard of, and he wasn't even supposed to play this year. Oh, my God, he's doing so well. And then, like, four games later, he's back to sucking. Yeah. Remember Duck Hodges? Wow, this kid is electric. He's onto the scene. He he blows duck calls. Oh my gosh, what a what a stud. Oh, he sucks. Never mind. Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen. 
even the other Mason Rudolph. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this story so many times. The fact that people still get fooled by it. It's just stunning. Because I think people are waiting for the Tom Brady thing to happen again. Like this kid who's just kind of sitting behind is just waiting for his opportunity. And then like Taylor Heineke gets his chance. He comes out here and almost beats the Bucks, but there's promise. Then he comes out next year with Washington, and they go to the playoffs, and they win a Super Bowl, and it's an amazing story, and he's the next Tom Brady. Like That's what people are waiting to happen. But guess what? We have this story happen at least once a season. It's not going to happen. Sorry to say. (laughs) Billy Joe, what's going on? Cheese. He's normally in the old Rapid Dave streams. Oh, nice. So he's throwing a Chiefs in here for on and off the field. Uh, my parents say Cam Newton will not be picked up by any team. He is a cancer. Pretty much. I mean, and then if you want to throw one last thing in for Washington's sake, Ron Rivera is there. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. So, that's a no. That doesn't really. That doesn't help his Cam Newton's case at all. It doesn't really bode well for Cam <laughs> Newton, the fact that Ron Rivera is still there. So maybe we'll put him at 33. Yeah. Actually, 34, because he had Nick Foles. Oh, that's right. Nick Foles. <laughs> And then Geno Smith with the Seahawks, so. So 35. Let's go through the backups. Buffalo Bills, who's their backup? <laughs> Matt Barkley, is, is 36. He the, is he in the top 64? <laughs> I would oh, put him at, like, 60. I think he is number 64. You know why? Because the Falcons literally don't have a backup. There is one person on the Falcons depth chart for quarterback, and that's Matt Ryan, because Matt Shaw retired. They oh, have yeah. no quarterbacks backing up. So they can just sign Cam Newton, and he's number 64. There you go. We figured it out. We Ford figured it out for Cam Newton. Cam Newton will be an Atlanta Falcon, folks. We figured it out. Uh, who's the new head coach down there? Um, Raheem Morris, I think. No. They didn't hire him full-time. Isn't it Arthur? From the, whatever his name is from the Titans. Arthur. Or. Arthur Blank's the owner. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of something else. Someone else then. Um, oh, oh, he is from Tennessee. The offensive though. coordinator from the Tennessee Titans went there. Yeah. I don't know what his name is, though. Let's look it, let's look it up. I we'll should be, we, end the... we should probably know that being a sports podcast, but we don't. Arthur Smith. So it was Arthur. Damn. Ah. You're good. I got the first name right. Wow. Arthur Smith. Got the arts down there. Got got a lot of Arthurs down there. Arthur Blank, the owner. Maybe that's why they hired him. Probably. Because Ar- Arthur Morris. Blank was probably thinking like, man, the name Arthur, that's a strong name. It's a strong name, man. I'm liking this guy. Yeah, already, How would you run our team? I have no idea. Don't hire me. Ah, you're just messing with me. You're just pulling my leg. Come on, Arthur. You're on the team. <laughs> Raheem Morris, Raheem Morris should have been like, yeah, my, my middle name is Arthur. Yeah, middle name is Arthur. They're like, we're looking at your birth certificate here, and it's not Arthur. I changed it. I, uh, <laughs> give me like six days, six seven days. I'll go. I'll go get the proper paperwork for that. He'll change his legal name to Arthur. <laughs> Arthur Morris. That's a strong name. That's a strong, that's a, name. That's a strong name. <laughs> God, <laughs> this this went off the rails at the end. Let's let's call it quits while we're ahead. Yeah. Well, before we get further behind, I should say. It was a good return. It was a strong return of the of the derf. Mm-hmm. Very good show. Very exciting. Very fun. It's all about having fun. So I appreciate everyone that came out to listen. And if you're listening to this as a podcast episode and you happen to make it to the end, God bless your soul. I love everything about you. So we will be back next week because Mama didn't raise no wusses.